by Wildcard. Yeah, the Jago ban. I mean, that's obviously a big target ban on when it comes to isolating players. And I, I think what we have to assume here is that this is a ban that Wildcard then made for the future. Wildcard styling on the yeah, attack, so they're not gonna ban the Jackal if they wanted to play him. They're ban the Jackal because they don't want to play against it or when they go on to defense themselves. That might speak to a lot of heavy roaming presence on maybe the Kitchen and Kitchen bomb side or something along those lines because Jackal's off the board. You want to be running around and roaming around as much as possible. A cheeky little drone there is at the bomb site that's gonna provide valuable intel. And because Souls is banned off by SSG, well, finding drones now is a lot more difficult. It's why 9 out of 10 drones, or should I say 4 out of 5 drones survive the prep phase, but who will not survive? It's gonna be Merc, who is sniped from across the map instead of Freezer, all the way to West Window Repel stage. That's unfortunate. Not exactly the star that you want. Down goes Merc. Down goes Yana. Down goes the nade. Still have nades in the hands of spirits, so not all hope is lost. This is a reading execute for wild card, so you want to keep this ledge alive. Yeah. Need to keep this ledge alive, dare I say it. Is this not one of the bomb sites as well when you and I cast at a cafe a long time ago, and by a long time ago, I mean probably last week. <laughs> Yeah. Where you said that Ram gets very, very good value on this particular site. Is that, am I, am I going crazy here or? No, you would be very correct. I mean, not a soft floor, right? And you want to destroy it. And who does it faster and better than Ram? Arguably nobody. But if you want to play Dokebi and two sets of grenades and an Ash, you just kind of start for opportunities here at Operators. But look at that. A swing on in from Spurs and back out he goes. SSG leading the way in these engagements. Doubling up on numbers. A fruitless fight from Spirits on the reading door as he's leaned into his monitor about as close as he can possibly go. Walks into Forest's waiting arms and now it's Adam to take above. One pick to start off with. A grab cam access as well. One logic bomb in back pocket, three flashbangs, and one minute to go. Adam will use that logic bomb selfishly because who else is going to benefit from it unless there are drones laying around that could possibly give him intel and it certainly looks that way because also the cams are in their back pocket too or front pocket i suppose if you want it to be more accurate yokai drones giving away the position of adam as he's now inside of laundry those yokai drones are also giving information still controlled by houghton though is Adam is stuck inside of the laundry room, finding the yokai, but having some struggles all the while, the clock continuing to run away. The three players from Space Station not really needing to move a muscle at all. Adam's next step is to retrieve the diffuser, which is inside of reading. He has to be concerned with getting the plant down. Why? Because the kill holes above him will provide audio. Forrest will know that the diffuser is being activated. Be moving there just Five yet. Seconds, I don't know if they have a Attackers read on this. He might have caught Space Station. Bit of an awkward spot. Flash out. Prepared to take one engagement. Kill holes to his right. Missing out on an opportunity. All three players of SSG emerge from a very similar position. That's the Cafe Club car. Or the Cafe Clown car. But I don't really want to call them clowns. But you get the metaphor, right? Space Station wins round number one. And again, how many teams will play out that three versus one like we just saw from Space Station where you do it? Uh, I, I hate referencing other games, but it's like it, this is very counter strike like right where you give up a bomb site and you play the numbers and you play the retake. But that doesn't really happen commonly in Siege and SSG, one of the only teams there I say in the world to ever really have this kind of play style besides Astralis. But the current space station is a merge of SSG and Astralis, so, you know, it's potato potato. And it's very refreshing to watch because it, essentially what this means is nobody's risking putting themselves in a one versus one. It was a literal three versus one, and there's no realistic chance that Atom or any other player in the world can clutch out in the scenario because it's just, it's too tall of an ask, honestly, in that position. So, very innovative gameplay here. A different spin from Space Station. And if you're a wild card, you know, you get close in the first map of Clubhouse, you lose 5-7. It could have really been anybody's, anybody's map for the taking. 
But now you go into cafe and you start attack because you chose the map. Well, there are a couple of maps that Diffed the Art Defender sided. Cafe is one of those maps, so it's not a great place to be, to be honest with you. And last time these two teams, they fought each other, well, it was earlier, you know, in group stage. It was a 7-4 victory for Space Station on Cafe. So, a bit of a tough position for Wildcard, unless they really put in the prep work. But Jesse and Lax kind of broke out on desk saying, Wildcard's map pool just isn't that great. They were kind of forced into this Cafe pick. They didn't have much choice. Nope. Oh. in there. Swing and a miss. Starting on the top floor now. Oh, somebody early. I'll give them a call. Merc safe for the time being. This mining execute that will unfold from wildcard. Your cacophony of those phones ringing off as there's a late castle barricade that goes up on one of the cocktail windows as J90 assumes a very familiar position onto the black mirror. A look inside of back bar. Wild card stacked up on these windows. Who will be the first to get into the building? Oh my god, look at those indicators as they toss everything plus the kitchen sink at Ashen. Prevailing in that duel. Great reflexes by Fultz, but Fleen betrays him, looking the wrong way. SSG just punished. 90 seconds in. Last two players hunkered down. It's Forest drops. Adam is so close by. Who's prepared for this? Forrest sees it tagging him quite heavily, but Adam is just gonna continue to run. One minute left now, hot and cold, keeping numbers close. Wildcard still with the advantage with one minute left on the clock. Really awkward here for Wildcard because they do have numbers advantage with one, but planting is going to be difficult. SSG, they're still holding on. Yellow pins come out, so Intel is there for them. Wildcard, they have to act quickly before SSG can help one another. Oh my, SSG have caught Wildcard in a bad spot. Diffuser in a lion's den or the viper's pit, depends on which type of animal you prefer. Oh, look at hot and cold, so close range! Doing serious damage and getting the down. There's a nade unsheathed. Hotty does not take the bait though. Forest on the cross, and now Merc knows that it's not a 1v1 in this engagement. Nade goes in, hot and cold flushed out. Can Forest shut down Merc? Merc is just so damn good. Wild card strike back in round number two. <laughs> Again, it comes down to the wild once more. In these clutch moments, every single player is so capable in them. And what typically is a perfectly played two versus one for Space Station, well, Merc was the one player to actually find a gap and a weakness by playing smartly around utility and trying to fake out that nade sound a couple of times so that when he actually stuck the grenade, well, SSG didn't know. So either you go for the swing and try and survive by running away, but then if Merc isn't holding the grenade in his hand, you die to his gun. And if you think that he's actually faking it, but he isn't, you die to the grenade. So there's no real winning there for Space Station. I guess you can say if Forrest didn't go for the swing afterwards and try to play for time because there was only 12 or so seconds left, you can force Merc into an arc position. I think that's your best bet. But either way, the early stage of that round really is what sealed the deal for Wildcard. They just peeled off that top floor hold incredibly fast and with ease. Just flashbang spam with a grenade that cleared off Ash and then a trade up top just a double swing together. Got them the control they wanted. And Hot and Cold we saw here just stuck in a really awkward position with no real way out or back into it. A great pre fire for Merc. Well done for him. Downstairs, the next line for SSG. This is a map where we expect to see all four bomb sites played. Cocktail up top will likely emerge from one of these two teams. In their very first map that was played, Clubhouse, every single bomb site was present. Albeit, far in stage only got played one time, but it still counts. Yeah. Of course. Still hung up on this bombsite not being called Bakery. I don't care how long this rework has been in the game for, I still call it Bakery. Just like I still call it Twitter. 
Hell yeah. Don't blame me for that one at all. Old habits die hard. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you change the name to. Both bomb sites are in the kitchen, but guess what? There's no bakery in my heart. <laughs> Nades tossed in. Also the Gone Six, removing one of those dread mines. Wildcard bringing the Blitz. No fanfare from you with the Blitz. The Sens on the no, board no, no. as well. Merc Here team light Sens. That rolling oh, really gadget will keep on going. Spirits in hot pursuit of the Warden of J90. He gets dropped. Trading. Four kills in very short order. And the Blitz is still alive. I'm certain you'll be overjoyed at that one. Loved it. Great execute. Not only Spirits himself, one of the best Blitz players in the world, but also Wildcard, they know this and they play so well around it. We don't see Sense with a very high presence and pick rate in pro play, but for these one-off strats, Sense is one of the greatest operators because you just get a really quick smoke wall to shroud an entry point, and Spirits can just do his job like this. Easy. <laughs> Oh, I didn't go to this. Scoreline's 420. <laughs> Don't betray yourself. Give the kill to somebody else. Oh, oh, surviving for the time being. Sends and Blitz, the last two operators still no. up. There's no way Hot wins this, right? No. Spirits blazing a trail through the site. Technically, it's 520 now, but the joke was funny at the time, I suppose. <laughs> Wildcard win two in a row. I love that again. I mean, hot and cold, uh, you know, very bold move there, going for the secondary shotgun bail to try and finish off the blitz. And Spirits is just, you know, when you talk about great shield players, there's this weird thing where the difference between a really good shield player and a great shield player is that the great shield player will just hit every single hipfire shot. Like, it's ridiculous. And, I mean, let's say Spirit shot about 20 bullets that round. I swear to you, he hit at least 10 of them. Like, how many players can just that effortlessly hit that many firing shots? I don't know. But Spirit, he's your man. And there is actually this very interesting mechanic with shields where if you shoot at a shield, a Monty or a Blitz or a Fuse, etc., even if you don't hit them and do damage by just simply hitting the shield itself, you actually increase their hip fire spread meaning they are less accurate. So if you just look at a shield and you have the option to shoot the shield and do no damage or just, you know, conserve your bullets, it's better that you just kind of tab it with the shield slowly because you're going to make the hit by accuracy worse, AKA the odds of them hitting you a lot lower. And when I say a lot, it's like a 70% reduction. Like it's ridiculous the hip fire spirit you're getting shot at. Just a small little tip there because a lot of people don't seem to know. It's also a mechanic that isn't very doesn't happen very often, but TLDR, shoot shields, don't just look at them. Down goes Packers, there's the very first altercation before we get into this, hoping that the pace of this particular round is a little bit slower, just so I can kind of bait myself here. Remember when you used to be able to kill a Blitz by shooting his earmuffs? Oh boy. Yeah, that was a tough meta to be a Blitz. That was back Didn't... when your armor, quote-unquote, was still part of the hitbox, and that was yep. something that the devs changed like six years ago at this point. Think about yesterday, we actually saw a match where somebody was shooting the backpack of Lion and it wasn't yeah. doing any damage. Well, that's because it's not actually his body. In real life, if you had a gun and you shot somebody's backpack, oh, no. Oh, no. it wouldn't kill them, but you would definitely feel it. Obviously, this is not a real game. You don't just pull metal reinforcements out of your behind. No, I was gonna bring that up. But it changed the hitboxes so that everybody's the same size hitbox, but your visual silhouette might be different. Blitz back in the day, he used to shoot uh, the protective uh, headphones that he had on his head, those ear cups, and it would actually kill him and count as a headshot. Thank goodness to both of these teams for the pacing they set, because now the killing will resume once we have finished our anecdote. And there's another casualty for Wildcard. It's, uh, it seems like the count to Wildcard is if you shut them down early, you shut them down for good. They really thrive off just having that momentum in terms of like when they want to push forward, nothing can stop them. And when you lose a member early in the round, you have one whole less gun and operator on the ground, so a lot less can be worked with. And you also see SSG playing out that beautifully where they get an initial kill and they kind of fall back. 
They don't need to hold top floor anymore. They just gotta worry about the bottom side. Maybe play on a basement staircase. And you see here, everyone's relatively close to one another. So that if a fight does break out at some point, a possible trade can happen. Or at the very least, they don't lose that part of the map because that member just happens to die. Explosions galore. One over the top ahead of Fultz, but he's prepped and ready for it. Wildcard pick up two picks. One from SSG keeps the advantage for Space Station. Now it's an ill-advised peak from Surf with Merc trying to get to the site. Diffuser in hand shut down by Space Station. Back and forth, just as we saw in the very first map. Space Station take round number four. It's tie game yet again. Exactly what I thought was going to happen, to be honest, with how Clubhouse also played out. And it, it does appear to me that both teams are kind of feeling each other out, kind of feeling like, okay, who's actually going to take control and how does the opponent want to play out these rounds? Because we saw in Clubhouse a bit of adaptation because things would start off in, you know, a, a normal pace, I would say. And it went fast, then it went slow. And then it ended up being a lot of fans in general and a wild card, they were the ones in control. And when Space Station are in control, they like to play it the opposite way, where they like to get that initial lead and then hold on to it and just play it arguably safe, if you will. So very two different team identities, and they have this awkward kind of clash in how they want the rounds to play out because they're so different. But as long as Wildcard can hold on early in the round, you can never really check them out. They always find kills seemingly out of nowhere, even in that previous round. Yeah, it's a three versus five. They still find two picks in the midst of that. Sure, it's not enough, but if that was a, let's say a, a two versus two or a two versus three, all of a sudden it's very winnable for them. Does it feel like a longer pause between rounds? Did I miss something? I mean, nothing's uh, occurred, but no, we just, uh... Attackers have discovered the location <laughs> of a bomb. Apparently there was some Miscommunication with one of the teams. That's fine. Yeah. I was not crazy. Maybe I still am crazy, but not. I don't want to come to this instance. My theory from all the way back in round number two was that we would eventually see all of the bomb sites. It has not come to pass yet, as. There's another attempt at kitchen. Not yep. Five seconds. No, no basement. Just kitchen and kitchen. It's um, Attackers are heading very disappointing if Space Station will not show us all four because it's like, it's kind of like an unwritten rule, you know? Whenever Space Station plays, they show all the bomb sites because they're cool like that. Watch. They still get one more chance next round, but if not, then I'll be disappointed once again. Packer, however, you know, and Spirits, they keep on giving me all this good stuff. We see some Blitz rounds, see some Monty rounds, and I think if you're having a statistically hard game like Packer currently is 0 and 4. Of course he has value elsewhere, but he's just just raw killing. I think it's fantastic when you can say, okay, it's time for a Monty round because whenever you are down like this, going 0-4 for example, it's great to pick up the Monty because you're probably still not going to get any kills, but you'll be alive, you can plan a lot easier, get that roam clip going. Look at this. Packer walks in, surfs behind him, they can clear out this top floor in no time with very little risk of anybody actually dying. And we know, because we have the silhouettes in top-down view, that there isn't really a roaming presence from a space station. But if you're a wildcard, you can't take that risk. You gotta check every corner, drone every floor, and just spend the first half of the round and pay the respect to the opponent saying, there could be someone hiding there. I mean, we saw Beast Coast play Caveira on Oregon um, last play day, just hiding inside a small tower. So anything's possible, you never know. Ooh. Explosion in front of Packers' eyes as now one of those secondary breach charges goes down and more explosions all around as there goes the hatch that leads from inside a dining towards the back of Freezer. That's the bottom floor Freezer, not to be confused with what some might call the Freezer upstairs. I like the Monty pick again. Last time that Wildcard attacked on this bomb site, it was a Blitz that was taking center stage. Spirits is on the buck instead. Maybe more of a classical lineup for wildcard. No sends, no blitz. Yeah, I'd say that's probably more normal now. Yeah. 
I mean, I do think Penguins kind of drop here and walk in. As long as the cover is good enough, vertically speaking, I think they can just get this bomb started to get down, honestly. The Ninja Turtle plant, right? Sure, yeah. The, the shield on plant. your back, plant down by the bomb chassis. SSG's numbers narrowed down by Wildcard, who've only lost Adam, but now Merc will lay on the ground, bleeding out in the frost map. Spirit's gone too. Ashen engaging with the Monty. He gets out of there. I think that's a wise decision. Hold on a second. What the hell was that? Space Station literally pivot and slaughter the last two players. Merc was stuck in the trap, so he dies too. And SSG wins the round. Out of nowhere as well. I mean, it, it, it looks so simple, right? Monty walks in, he's going to do the Ninja Turtle plant shield in his back, which would work perfectly because there's no C4, there's no Toxic Babes, there's no Echo. Like, there's no way for Space Station to realistically shut down that plant. All, and I do quotation marks, all Wildcard had to do was have one, peep, one person on the double door flank on the bottom side, lead into the hallway. One hold the cross between the two bomb sides. Oh, I gotta hold the, the freezer flank. That's it. Three players holding three angles with the Monty plant, plant, uh, planting and it still leaves the fifth guy as a free, free card, so to speak. They can do whatever he wants. But instead, Merc is into a trap. Couple of gunfights go the wrong way. The Monty doesn't get in successfully and the round just falls apart. I mean, pretty much out of nowhere. But I will say, it was Space Station who started things off themselves. When they recognized that their strategical advantage went out the window, they swung the red staircase. They got the first open move in that execute stage of the round. So it wasn't a wild card making a massive blunder. It was SSG saying, okay, enough is enough. Stop swinging. And then, of course, you get a kill there, a frost map here, and you have a month you can't really fight back all that much. And all of a sudden, SSG detect the round. Just like that. And ooh, ooh, look at that, all four bomb sites. The final of SSG, they do us proud. Well done. Flappy flappies. Attackers have located a bomb. <laughs> Reloading! I don't believe the usual headsets that we use would pick up on that clapping, but because we are using our home setups, you can custom tailor it. Mm. I, in fact, have a whole soundboard in front of me, but I feel like sometimes using the mute button is me limit testing as is. Oh, the odd sound bite might be entertaining to interject, maybe not. Maybe not professional. Launching tracking drone. This approach for Cocktail will start below the opposite of what we tend to see, which is that you clear from the top down. There is no top to clear from other than the roof. So for Wildcard, they're going to want to buck from below. They're going to want to nade from below. Hold on a second here. Hold on, Forest. They are so close to you. They're closing in on you. The logic bomb was going. The wall was open. Nobody from Wildcard heard this whatsoever. And Forest in this spot is taking wild card to school phenomenal i mean that's a that's a solo bolo a little good old 1v2 and he also i mean he could walk up to my staircase and if he doesn't then he'll die to adam but the timing forrest the magician he gets away once again the nade primed on the rappel ssg the sizable advantage at this point Forest will run downstairs and run the gamut and focused a lot on more of the macro and not the micro. Acker still searching for his first kill in this map. He's about to go the entire first half without any impact on the scoreboard. Jane, I know, long range, doing some damage, but can't walk away with a victory in the duel. And it'll be spirits to inch on up. Packer holding the diffuser, so he needs to stay alive. Maybe make his presence felt. Down go spirits. Adam damage. Same with Packer. Now Packer's gone. He will go the whole first half without a kill. So now a miracle needs to happen, but it won't. Space Station bring Wildcard back down to Earth. First half goes to SSG 4-2. Yeah, and 4-2 when you start defense and cafe is kind of what we we were expecting to see, but this is Wildcard's map pick. I mean, and you can almost guarantee that, they, you know, they would expect to start on the attacking side because when you choose the map, the opponent chooses starting side. And there really isn't any reason to not pick defense unless, you know, A, you're a crazy good attacker team, or two, you want, you know, to change who bans operators first. That's the only real difference there. 
So it shouldn't be a surprise to see the go it will take Thief. And a wild card, I mean, there are a couple of things that just really sways the rounds in favor of Space Station. Like we just saw, if Forrest doesn't get that double kill downstairs in library, all of a sudden, or in reading, sorry, that could be a completely different round. And it seemed like they were going to try and kill Forrest, right? The Dogeby call was made, Buck opened up the wall, but they didn't seem to know he was there or that he was even remotely cloned somehow because he kept the first go into Murr because the wall was opened up and the Buck right after him. So very puzzling circumstances there, which you know, it puts Wildcard in an unfavorable position to the round count, but they're still in it. They're gonna start Five their defensive pile for HG. They ended theirs upstairs in the top floor and they're bringing a is to couple of different ball. operators to the table, right? Utility and both the Legion and the Frost deployed with shield and the Goob Mines, Mute to deny the walls, or mine to keep people safe because that's very important. Those are my discs. And the good old Valkyrie information game from Packer. Now, if Pagger is not going to get any kills this game, which, as you mentioned, 0 6 in the first half, it's very important that he as an individual finds value elsewhere. That can be with in game leadership, being vocal, or playing these intel oriented operators like the Valkyrie to relay information to his teammates, like what you can on attack by using drones or playing Monty, for example. It is always tough when an individual player is having a bad day because. It's hard not to point out as a commentator, but also in fans of watching, it's easy to go, haha, that guy's bad, he's 0 6, haha, that guy's good, he's 5 and 5. When it's like there are so many small details that play into these rounds that are really hard to account for. Packer hasn't been useless this game, oh. but he also hasn't been the hero yet. No, that's it's entirely made. true. And, and I mean, I also think it boils down to the role that you're on, right? Yeah. Packer is not going to be the player on this wildcard roster that you expect to be racking up the kills. He's not going to be at the forefront of most of their attacks, and he's not going to be wasting the most time on Rome on defense. As you can see, he's playing Lion. He had the Diffuser a lot of rounds. In a lot of ways, he's playing that flex support role, and I imagine it's the same with the way that he's going to approach Valkyrie on this defense. Though I will say, losing Spirit's not too far off of the bomb chassis upstairs. This is a cocktail defense for wildcard. Everybody on wildcard are now gonna have to carry more weight because the five kills to beat SSG are gonna need to be found by four people, not by the five. Wildcard have found themselves in a tough spot in their very first defense. If I'm spirits, I'm blaming I'm blaming Surf, right? There's no disc to cover me, the nade goes out, I get injured. Where's one of my disc, you know? But that's the difficulty of Omai versus Jaeger. With Jaeger, you put them down in print phase, you know where they are. With Omai, you will recharge discs as the round plays out. So at certain points in the round, you'll have more disc or less discs available. So had a few more seconds gone by, maybe he'd be saved. Either way, the first guy to step up to this challenge is Merc. He finds the first kill for wildcard in this round, but they need more. Multiple flashbangs go in, but none of them can be credited for why Merc doesn't see J90. That's just a simple one-for-one -one gunfight that J90 comes out ahead of. Fultz, the suicide oh. flick on in, serve a beautiful shot. Takes down two before being downed, but can be retrieved. But Ashen is on the hunt. He'll get the pick. 15 seconds left. Hacker and Adam. Acker down below with the Nitro Cell. We talk about impact kills. This could be the remaining. most impactful kill for him. And on this round, and there he goes, breaking the goose egg. With Adam picking up a kill as well, Wild Card managed to win the round. One away from tying Space Station, and more importantly, keeping Space Station from running away with Wild Card's map. Yep, and still, even though they're down in numbers early on, they're still really fighting it every single inch that they could. I mean, Merc swing out, getting one kill, then getting shut down. And I mean, the Surf flick where they traded was massive because if he had just outright died, that's one more attacker up. That means the plant can maybe go down. You know, you sacrifice one player to C4, second guy plants instead. And just the sheer side presence from having one more attacker alive, which massively benefits Space Station. I will say this death here on Fultz though, he rambled in the window just honestly like two seconds, maybe one second too early. The capital fire just went out. And it's like you just wait, let's really start ticking up and things to happen and then you can get in safely wait for teammates to push the white hallway first perhaps because cocktails is more important than white hallway control is arguably either way very small things in those rounds you can nitpick at if you want to but uh what what, what is this wall 
they have opened up the entire wall between this. Like, this is like you play casual at 2 a.m. on a weekend and your random picks the Shanga and it just go and they break the whole wall. That's the one of the few times I've seen that. And now this. Typically, we see this if you play like uh, smoke or Tishanke because you can just like freely use that line of sight for your gadget to plant an eye and whatnot. Maybe it's beneficial for, of course, like long lines of sight, yokai can see more, etc. But opening up the entire wall like that is definitely something. Setting up a sequential breach. There's gonna be some theory behind there, right? That we're missing out on. Yeah, I mean. There, there's hey, a reason. This is where you need to be the expert, not me. I'm tr I'm thinking, I'm thinking, and I'm like, there's a reason for it, and it's gonna maybe make sense, maybe not, but I have no idea what that specific use case is. When we get to the bomb site, maybe we'll see the player positions. I mean, I'm just assuming it's a long last site, one way or the other, there's no cover for the attackers. We'll see. Either way, space station doing space station things with Forrest just walking with Monty, kind of being the bait again, trying to take off eyes towards his location because while he's attacking Bakery single-handedly, well, the rest of space station are getting ready elsewhere. Rome clearing, lurking around, trying to catch Aroma off guard with combination of players and those Dokubi calls from Fultz. So far, no catch. The Q right now, spawning these gadgets, giving information. Merc now the one on the Valkyrie. The changes to shotguns have really enabled flexibility on the loadout for Echo. There goes Merc, by the way. Adam trading back. So long, Ashen. I was going to point out that Packer's been rocking the Supernova. A lot of teams running the suppressed Supernova on Echo because of the strength of shotguns now. Especially on this downstairs bomb site, you get a lot of value playing those close corners. You do. I mean, the big thing to note here is that SSG fishing for a kill with Dogepi is very high in value because you get to hack the cameras, you find the yokais and the black guys from Valkyrie, so all of a sudden, Intel gets shut down immediately from the side of SSG and Wanka are gonna play most of this round blind, or at the very least, the Intel they have, as so do SSG. Oh, best player in terms of the duels so far. Suffering a near fatal blow. Walking into bakery. There goes Adam, the hot and cold. One by whiskey, but Fultz is just a little bit too quick. Oh my goodness. SSG so surgical. Hacker in freezer. Sidearm out. Tough to control the bearing nine, but he gets it done. Removing hot and cold, but he's giving his position away. Now he downs Forrest, but SSG puts him on ice. Wildcard winning their very first defense, not the same success on their second gap of two rounds grows again. SSG on top 5-3. I, I feel kind of bad for Packer there because, you know, he is essentially two shotgun shells away from being the hero that his team needed so badly. He gets the first kill, the down onto Monty by hitting the shoulder as far as was very low on HP and... Supernova close range with SSG pushing towards you, it looks so winnable for a brief moment. But of course, stars just do not align for him. And Wildcard, with that round loss, they take the tactical timeout. And I think it's in, in, in good time, you know. You're on the last half, unless you go OT. You're going to play things out on defense. You're down 5-3. to three, And you got to talk about bombsite preference rotation. Because all four bombsites are very playable. And I'm actually very curious as to Wildcard's bombsite rotation. I was kind of questioning on Clubhouse, where they were, you know, not going bar. They were happy to play those more like passive bomb sites, if you will. And now in cafe, they go top floor bomb site and then to kitchen and kitchen. And they play out very differently. Whereas most teams would go like reading into top or top into reading. And then the question comes, do you go kitchen as tertiary or mining? Because mirrors available. So all of a sudden mining looks mighty fine. It's just she tried it. Okay, fair enough. They, uh, they also made it work in their favor. But just a little bit curious about the boss rotations here. So maybe that's a conversation for wild card in that prep phase to say, or that's at the time I'd rather. Where do we go next and where should we not go back to unless absolutely necessary? And they do make up that change. Attackers Going to read in library instead. Over lineup. A little bit different, of course. Gotta bring some new chill like the mirror. Adam is playing the thorn of all operators. 
We don't see a lot of Thorn on Cafe because if you want the gadget tree for staircases like this, well, you got Fenrir, you got Melusi, you got good old barbed wire, if you will. But of course, you do get a portable shield, a good gun with that 1.5x scope, and it could just be a comfortable pick for Adam in this case. Setting the welcome now you see me, now you don't. Very critical round for Wildcard, who have been fighting for their lives ever since round number three. Wildcard had a brief one-round lead in this map. Other than that, it's been SSG all the way. Given that this is Wildcard's map, it's a bad predicament to find yourself in. SSG already up one nothing, as you can see. That little blue dot next to the space station logo in the top center of the screen. The winner of this best of three goes on to play M80 with a shot. The Atlanta Major on the line. Not all hope is lost, though, for the team that ultimately failed to succeed. So it's not a predicament that you really want, right? No, it's not. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, no. You know, I like when patient players, they get rewarded for holding an angle. Oh, but actually, oh, okay. He ends I mean, up getting rewarded, but though the first pick doesn't go in his favor, goes to Adam, but it trades back and Space Station finds an advantage. So while they don't get the first pick, numbers still favor the SSG squad. Those logic bombs ringing out. Top floor control looking good for Space Station. Joe you can hack into the cams as well. As forced to juggle the diffuser above, Fultz very patiently waiting for a retake. When you have a numbers advantage, you can play that game, play prone on white stairs, and make matters even worse for the defenders when they inevitably try to retake from above. That is a disgusting okay. shot from Forrest. <laughs> Absolutely annihilating Packer down below. Good night. Yep. And then all of a sudden, that C4 doesn't work on the ceiling anymore. Serves for my Adams the Thorn. There's no way to deny the plan here. They gotta fight it out. But this is where SG, they're so disciplined, right? They're not gonna make that mistake and go too fast. They're gonna destroy all the floor, get situated, then get the cover, and then go for the plan. Oh, the Thorn Trap. Razor Bloom going off. Adam sees the upside down repel. A tough shot to hit, but suddenly Wild Card have leveled things out. Not before Forrest has something to say about that. Now it's Surf. We'll ride the waves, but ultimately fall off. Space Station on series point. Adam was almost the hero again. Wild Card so close in these rounds. If one or two things just go their way, if they can find those gaps, then, well, that's it for them. But SSG. They're one of those teams that when they get that, the part of the map that they care about, that they get that initial open and kill, they don't take any risks. I mean, we saw Fultz on the Dokubi not even go to hack the cams for a long while because he was the person in charge of holding down the white staircase flank. And they're just like, you know, you could go hack the cams and get some value, but what if somebody finds the same second? Then you die and you might lose the round. So the discipline is great. Then the insult came later in the round. That yellow ping that allowed the kill on to Packer was phenomenal. And then we see Adam and Surf playing well together in that two versus two. But it's always SSG in these moments. That comes out on top. One more player alive. They hit that better shot, whatever it might be. They seem to just find success in those moments. Now it's do or die for wild card. It is their map pick, but as the analyst said on the desk, they were kind of forced into Cafe due to the weak map pool from Wildcard and how it plays out with a mixture of the maps that they prefer and the ones that HSG they prefer. They've been trying a couple different things, you know? Wildcard, they're playing Intel, they're playing without the Intel, the Mira, without the Mira. And I think right now it's just try and go for Brook. Right, Packers and Doc, give the man a good gun, great. Keep the Valkyrie for Intel, sure. But if you keep playing the Valkyrie, and you know the enemy keeps playing the Dokupi, you can't keep losing members early in these really odd positions, because not only do you lose a guy like usual, but when Dokupi hacks those cameras, the Valkyrie literally works against you. It's almost like playing six versus four, because now the defenders can shoot their own default cameras and Valkyrie cameras, all the attackers will see what they are. So you gotta stay close to sight, close to our friend, not sacrifice that camera really. I mentioned in the previous round that not all hope is lost is that there will be a seeding match played for the last chance qualifiers, which as the name suggests is your last chance of qualifying for the Atlanta Major. There are also SI points on the line. OXG will await the loser of this matchup in that LCQ match. 
Dark Zero and Sonics will be playing. M80 will be playing whoever wins here. Right now, certainly looks like Space Station is the favorite. But we've seen games completely flip on their head before. The task for Wild Card is an immense one, but not impossible, and not one that we haven't been in this position to see a team like Wildcard pull off before. But with that, I'm wandering downstairs in the nook of hot and cold, not being spotted. Wildcard have four players against the five of Space Station. Half of the round to go, and SSG just needs four more kills to book their spot against M80. Classic hot and cold round. Any plays Valkyrie, you bring out the Nook and you, you use their intel against him because Nook can't be seen by those cameras and he finds that opening kill for his team. Second step, clear out those mirror windows with the crossfire well established here by Wildcard. As the member of Freezer that spirits and smoke can shut down those Excairo pellets. Means that the executive is not gonna be as easy as it might have looked in the beginning for Space Station Gaming. Nice shot back. I don't know if Hot and Cold saw that one coming, but if there's anybody who's going to be able to hit the good night, it's the man who helped popularize it himself in Merc. In terms of kills on the wild card side of thing, not a single player is in the positives right now, which is not ideal. It's been relatively even amidst the top kill getters, as you want to call them. But you need a standout performance over the next couple rounds. There's very little room for error for wild card at this point. Space Station now, battling the timer and the players from Wildcard who are very eager to greet them. Surf a pick, Wildcard with an advantage. It'll come to blows as Packer gets flashed. Fultz charging in amidst the gas. He thought he had a lineup, but there's nobody to see him and he costs himself an opportunity to get Diffuser down. Wildcard putting in some serious work. And they gotta be BG's fans, they're staying alive. A fourth round for Wildcard, they need two more back-to-back. -back. Overtime is the only way that Wildcard escape this match in a positive direction. Yeah, I mean, they're staying alive for now, but the issue really is that the more rounds you win, the tougher the bombsite selection gets, especially if the only place you won as a wildcard, well, it's only on top four defense. They lost Kitchen, they lost Library, and now you just won the only bombsite that you won on previously, so you're forced to not play it again until overtime. So it's gonna be a rough road ahead unless you can figure out the troubles. But there's also the magic of match point, right? Teams, they start feeling that pressure. They're all so close. And risk assessment is something that becomes troublesome to some players because typically you always want to play to win, which means you, if you see an opening, you see a gap, you see an opportunity, you take it, right? Because it's what your instincts tell you to do. But when you are afraid of making that play because, oh no, what if we lose this round? If I do it, that's bad. And, you know, we're so close to winning. All of a sudden, you are trying to fight your own instincts and start you know, hesitating on your own actions. And very quickly, what could have been a round victory play turns into the reason why you very much lost that round instead. And that's where that comes with the, with the job. Space Station, however, you know, very experienced players in this roster. I wouldn't expect them to have that issue, but you never know. You can always strike you at a moment's notice. Right now, it's gonna be a wild card fighting for another round downstairs in kitchen and kitchen. And they pick up that same kind of U2 lineup. Merc really favoring that vector, that high fired weapon. And we've seen Merc the last like, two or three rounds. Just literally, if an enemy is nearby, he will swing them without hesitation. Again, working off his instincts, knowing that he can get those skills working for his team. And it has been working out mostly. I mean, Merc's eight and eight. He's traded equally one to one. No issues there at all. You see where it slows down to another round here. Just trying to make sure everybody makes it to the building alive. This has been a good series between these teams, and this match in particular has been a good one as well. Obviously better if you're a Space Station fan, but this is where Wildcard has the chance to elevate this match from good to great. Three rounds in a row, defying the odds and sending us to overtime would be just about the best performance that we've seen from this wildcard roster, at least up to this point. Mm. They've got work to be done, and also they won't be able to do it alone. They will likely need some assistance from Space Station, but when I say assistance from SSG, I don't mean that in a positive manner. I mean that as in Space Station will have to commit some mistakes that wildcard will read into and punish. This is half of the round now done. Focus for Space Station. On to this main floor. Merc will be the gatekeeper, playing at the bottom of Red Stairs. 
but Logic Bomb surely giving away his position. Fultz was waiting for it. No Logic Bombs remaining. There goes J90. Thrones onto Red Stairs. Fultz assessing Merc. They were once the duo all the way back on OB. He lines him up. Cannot connect. Merc walking away. Fultz will have another opportunity. Kill hole still there. Sledging going on as well over top of the bomb site. SSG doing the necessary work to pull off and execute, but there's still some steps to go. Yeah, there are, there are many steps further to go here, and no clear way of how they're gonna execute, right? Don't got that Monty, don't got a nose for the shields. I mean, Ashen and Grim could open things up and get those beasts out, spot out some defenders for wildcard, but again, the bomb has to go down somewhere. SSG, they're running out of the place. They're not sure where to go, but here it is. One bottle white stairs, two guys head shot. This is the moment. And there's the drop. Ashen dying wild card, looking for a flawless lockout. Forest inside a freezer, jumped upon, but he's better in that engagement. No flawless for wild card. Yokai's still up as well. Nade sails out. Forest trying to keep these players at bay with some area denial. He needs Fultz to get in the position though. Ten seconds left, and Fultz can't get it done. Neither can Forest. Big round for Merc. Wild card two in a row. We're going all the way. One more round of regulation. I think you just give Wildcard the operators and the guns that they want right now because they are thriving off individual success and comfort. Packer might not look the most comfortable right now, but he's also had a, had a tough time. Merc, ever since he got the mirror, got that vector in his hands, he's been finding so many kills for his team. And we see it, Wildcard, they want to fight every single aspect where SSG are happy to meet them. And it ends up being SSG almost trying to avoid these guns from happening. So perhaps a bit of nerves have struck them. You know, they will call a tactical timeout because they want to finish this off before overtime. And they were in a similar position last time where when things get close, HCC called a timeout. And last time, they won the following round and took it in regulation 7-5 to five on Clubhouse. I'm going to do this to you again, doctor. What medicine Diagnose. shall we prescribe? Diagnose <laughs> the space station disease right now you're ssg you're the coach of space station they have a single round to win this one in regulation mm. what do you do okay so let's assume they're tank and library it's statistically the most likely bomb side at least but not guaranteed of course you pick up a, a monty and you go for a piano white stairs hallway push right this is the good old 2018 si penta eg strat right you mow them down in that wide hallway because it's the only place Monty cannot get killed from a C4 below with that soft floor. Now, the bomb site will start off on the right end here. It is this library hold, statistically what you should expect if you're SSG. But there is an issue with the Monty. Forest has 13 kills, most kills on the side of SSG. Do you really put your highest performing player into the kills on an operator that's not supposed to get any, that is the Monty. Because to my knowledge, nobody else on Space Station is comfortable slash good enough to play Monty at this level of play as to what they need. As you see, they say the same thing. They want Forrest to be a playmaker. It's been him and Hot and Cold usually getting those initial openings or execute onto the bomb side. So I like this style from them. And I think the real big question here is simply, wild card in their individual decision making because Merc, we saw it last round, pick up good numbers, finding kill after kill, not surrendering the map control space. We see him already now. He's swinging the windows. He's looking for an active play. And she's just been playing and toying with these kind of mini executes, right? Double window open up, EMP finds out, Selma follows. And this is actually a very nice off-pace off hard reach where they don't have to worry about doing that later in the round. And it's free sub Jane, I know it frees up Fultz because the EMPs have been spent, the hard reach has been spent. If you time the wrong clear now, the wall's already opened up. And perhaps this will allow SSG to play more aggressive and less conservative because they've already done the last step of the plan as the first step in this round. You know, you might want to change the roster. You might, or rather, you might not want to. You might change the roster on the team. And you can take the players out of the choke, but you can't take the choke out of the organization because time and time again, SSG's fatal flaw is that when they get really close, they seem to stumble. The amount of times that they have the lead within their grasps and then just something breaks down. Lack of confidence, bad comms, who knows? 
And again, this is a completely Ooh. different roster. This really shouldn't be happening with different players. But to surrender two rounds, that's not ideal. And now Forrest has been cut off of the wire on Repel. Now Fultz ties two through the hatch. Doesn't see Adam there. Three kills for Wildcard. Space Station, right now, looking like it's coming down to a crash landing in regulation. Yeah, is it possible Hot and Cold and J90 can bail the rest of the team out of this? Sure, of course it's possible. Probable at this exact moment, with the clock where it is and the utility and lineup from Wildcard, it sure seems like we are barreling towards overtime. No, oh, it very much looks that way. I mean, J9 and the Hot and Cold, they got to pull out a round out of their hat to win this one. It starts off pretty well for J9. No, maybe there's still a chance in this round. A 5v2 or 5v3 tends to be among the most dangerous lead in Rainbow Six CG Sports. And SSG's last two players haven't suffered a single dent onto them, but this utility will persist. The jammers are still there. There's still a Nitro Cell that can be actively used by Spirits. 10 seconds left for J90 to get into the site and go for a plan. He assesses that the A-bomb site of dining is a better option. Spirit watching the C4. There goes hot and cold. J90 pulling it off. But Wildcard do the unthinkable and pick up three rounds in a row, propelling us to overtime. Oh, I mean, this is dangerous territory. I guess if you want to look at it, right, there is one team that has a lot more experience in this scenario than the other. Space Station, they have played, what, one, two, three, four, five overtime games in eight during the group stage. They had a very one-sided loss, 1-7 one to M80 to start things off, and then they went OT, 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 and OT again. Four overtime games in a row. Finding themselves another overtime wow. game technically is just another day in the Parker. office of Space Station. But as you said, Parker, History might repeat itself, but whenever they get very oh so close, they also fall the furthest. And you know that toxic trade where you know, men that they believe they can crash land a plane if they have to? Well, I don't think that this certainly might be the case. Not in real life and not in the game currently, because with how these rounds are playing out, it just looks like Wildcard, they're winning these rounds more and more convincing as time progresses. Picks galore and honestly, yep. confidence plays a huge factor. Attackers this SSG team, I just, I, in my head, I just, I, it might be unfair, but I always link most of the players on this SSG squad to just hogging themselves down mentally. And I don't know if that's what's happening here. We don't have access to their comms. I'm not going to pretend to psychoanalyze any of these players. But time and time again, when facing adversity, SSG, despite having tons of confidence, they seem to wither. And that's not to detract from what we're seeing at a wild card. Again, three rounds ago, I said if wild card want to pull off the unthinkable, which is win those three rounds in a row, double their score line, and do so while facing and staring down the abyss, they need help from SSG. Wild cards still need to capitalize. Wild card has absolutely been capitalizing, getting those first couple picks. That is taking advantage of the negligence of Space Station, of which there is no greater example than what's on your yeah. screen right now. There is a default cam still up, and Space Station players are visible on it as Merc sits on it and gives intel to the rest of the team. That's bad. I mean, if they if they just get the right time with the intel, they can definitely punish Ash, and they know he's alone isolated, and he doesn't realize, and he's probably not going to in this round. So if anybody's going to repel on the... Uh, the cocktail windows, well, Wildcard will know about it. That's very valuable information because those Valkyrie cameras, there was a change to them quite a while back, they cannot be outside the building any longer. So the only way to have this kind of intel is by default cameras and simply not being shot out. SSG, one of the few rounds where they're making a very big blunder and not doing the basics one, two, three, might be an issue for them. It might speak to their state as well currently. It's getting a little bit sloppy with these rounds. And they're kind of locked out again. These mirror windows, they've been unable to clear it every single round. They got the Thatcher step, but the Merc with another C4 for the kill again. Oh my goodness. SSG getting pummeled all over. Well, it's eliminating Surfer as close to it as you're going to get. Now marching down white stairs. He's got a lot of angles to look at. 
Secures his kill, but White Stairs still has not Reload. been let go of by Wildcard. SSG have their work cut out for them. And honestly, they are playing scared. How do you dig yourself out of this spot? Your whole strategy has been Bring blown up. You've lost your lion. Ashen has completely disappeared over the last four rounds. Now the rest of SSG will take matters into their own hands. Forest, simply extraordinary most of the time. Fultz will need to clutch out in a 1v2. He has information over towards White. Fuser is down. Merc and Packer will play off of that. After speaking of Packer's inability to find the score sheet, Attackers been able to put six to kills up. No doubt. Working very well. Oh! Wild card! What the hell? Fultz with two amazing kills, and suddenly Space Station sit on series point again! No! I mean... Merg is putting in so much work finding these kills and putting his team in such a good position. Then they get the 2v1, they play together on the same exact pixel, and somehow, while dancing on top of each other, Full finds both kills. That's not supposed to happen. And what looked like an SG that lacked confidence, well, after that kind of round, they're gonna be very happy. They were gifted and granted a complete loss and turned it into a victory somehow. Good lord! <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna lie, if I'm Merc right now, I'm a little bit tilted. Just because of the sheer individual performance, and he gets a triple kill in that round. They're going for flanks, they're going for these swings, and I mean, you can argue that Merc was the one to swing out far. And and I actually think if you want to like really analyze this down to the T, you have- Oh, look at Honeycomb. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, that's exciting. You had Merc and Packer in a two versus one. And, you know, we always talk about great clutching duos and trios, etc. And I think having Packer and Merc in the same 2v1 is probably the worst combination you can have. Nothing against Packer and nothing against Merc. But they play the game in such different ways, they are not on the same wavelength. Merc is always gonna swing. Packer, especially with that rough start going zero and seven, he's probably gonna play more laid back. And that's what we saw. Pagan was prone on the floor, holding a passive angle. Merc wide swung the door. It's the same thing as back in my day. If I was in a clutch with Junas, we would also lose because we don't play the game the same way. And I don't think when it comes down to those instinctive moments like we just saw, you don't have the time to communicate, oh, hey, let's swing right now. No, no, you do what your instinct tells you to. And it was just the complete opposite of that scenario. I am at a loss for words when it comes to this matchup. OXG and Sonics were a barn burner. Yeah. Was a barn burner. Increasing our defenses. We were talking so much ish about SSG and how they seemingly could not do the most basic of things and then wildcard pull off a relatively enormous blunder. Yeah, I, I'm, I think you're absolutely spot on. If I was Merc, I would be equally tilted, Nick because that was a round that he did pretty much everything in his power to win, and ultimately the team lost. Wildcard will need to now win two in a row. They've already done it once by winning three in a row. Well, they'll have to accomplish it again, but this time, that might be it for the momentum. Down goes Spirits, but up walks Surf. Packer on the board as well. Another target over towards Cocktail spotted. As there goes an Ash charge to open up a window towards Ashen. Merc inside a Cocktail. J90 missing an opportunity to finish that. Down goes hot and cold. Wildcard playing angry, playing hungry. They've got every single number for these players of SSG, and in a hurry, they send us to a 15th round. <laughs> it's not supposed to go by this fast in overtime. It seems like the longer this match goes on for, the quicker both teams are playing. And it's so hard to predict the outcome because it looks like, oh, it's great for this team. Two seconds later, oh, never mind, it's great for the other team instead. It really is a back and forth for both sides constantly. And I'm so happy we get to go all the way to the 15th round because I'm sure it'll end with a bang just like I started with one. Look at our matches so far today. Talk about the parody in the North America League. Sonics versus OXG, our very first map of the day played on Clubhouse, goes all 15 rounds. Chalet, the second map played, also OXG Sonics, go 14 rounds. Clubhouse between SSG and Wildcard go all 12 rounds of regulation, no overtime required there. Cafe is going the distance too. 
We are either three minutes away from the end of this broadcast, or we are 55 minutes away from the end of this broadcast. Those are the only two options at this point. Oregon awaits us as map number three, if required, and that is still a big if. Because realistically, this should already be over. Wildcard should have won both of those rounds. They didn't. Yeah. Oh, you're completely right. And they actually couldn't do it last time when they were match point. But this time, they might not have any other choice. It won't be the Monty for Forest, but it will be the Blitz. Now, the one thing is when Wildcard brought out the Blitz, he had the sense to follow up to help deny some of those angles and ground some protection for, for Blitz itself with smoking off angles. SSG don't full commit the same way as Wildcard did. It's just the Blitz with smoke grenades with the Dokkabi and Forms himself. And it still looks like it will be a, you know, a normal roam clear top down. So it's going to be an execute oriented Blitz for a late push, kind of like we see in Oregon, where you don't go for the basement elbow rush, but you do it later in the round when you're actually ready. They don't want to gamble everything on a moment's notice. They still want to go through the one, two, threes, but still have Forrest on that shield operator when they feel like they need him. And it's worth noting that he's hiding in spawn with his shield on his back to generate less noise with the movement to try and hide this fact. So as you see, you're actually gambling so much on Forrest's individual capability, and he just pinged the double door in Bakery. It seems like he wants to rush in there at some point in the round, but someone forgot to open the door for him. That could be a problem. That was indeed the plan, because now nobody can really do it for him. The fact that Space Station is bringing a blitz on defense oh, yeah, or on, on the, what's the final round is just, it's it's something else to me. And I mean, again, the only person that is clinically insane enough to pull this off is Forrest. Ashen, again, as we talked about, has been largely a non-factor since like the fourth or fifth round of this map. It will continue as he is picked off first. Merc is like fine wine. He's just getting better the older this map gets. Playing on rolls that frankly shouldn't be getting this the amount of kills that he's getting there goes yet another forces down wild card looking ripe and ready for oregon as map number three in comes forest confronting the echo takes them down but spirits is there to do some serious work sidearm out missing an opportunity on the hutton j90 in a 1v4 that says she had this map in their grasps but it has slipped right through their fingers unless j90 can pull off a 1v3. And guess what? He can't! Wild card! And one of the most incredible comebacks we have seen shoot down the rocket that is Space Station. An exhausting match for both teams. I'm fairly certain of it. But they're prepped and ready for map number three. We will go the distance. Oregon on the docket next. We'll be right back.